Valentine had been demoted, and Riven had put me in charge. Riven was our boss, our patron. I didn't know much about him other than that he paid our salaries and found us work. He also kept the lion's share of the spoils for his trouble. He kept a lot, maybe too much. But I was in no position to renegotiate. And besides, I'm not in this racket for the money. Valentine had left me a mess. That much was for sure. He'd been strutting around like a peacock for months, paying no attention to anyone or anything but himself. The team had suffered as a result. Sloth and apathy and heroes didn't mix. Well, I was gonna shake things up. I was good at that. I would salvage anyone who was salvageable and get rid of the rest. I took no joy in some of the terminations. Naya, Beckins, and Vera were difficult. They all had supported my rise. Especially Vero. We'd been close at the Wizard's Eye Academy. Just business, I told myself. She gave me a withering look as she left. I suspect I'll be seeing Vero again. Others were easy. Lester was prone to foul language and an even fouler temper. Guna had hated me since I joined the team, envious of the attention Riven paid me. Now I can hear what you're thinking. I wasn't getting that sort of attention. Riven cared about one thing and one thing only. Coin. And I was bringing that to him in spades. Finally, there was Hardak. He wasn't as well known as his clanmates Aisha Ramutu, but he was out to make a name for himself. Valentine had elevated him to second in command. He'd had worked hard and was a talented hero, but he shared Valentine's penchant for self-aggrandizement. I didn't see him foraging the teamwork we would need to thrive, and I let him go. Hardak didn't take my canceling his contract well. For a moment I thought we would come to blows, but his expression hardened. He gathered his gear and he went without a fight. On his way though, he stopped and turned around. I look forward to wiping the smile off your face as I bury you, he said. I had no doubt he would back up that threat with action. With the dead weight gone, I elevated Margarita to be my second. A Doom Legion Tempest and a Wizard's Eye Sniper may seem like an odd pair, but she wasn't all chaos and terror. She knew how to follow orders and keep the rest of the team in line. And besides, I didn't want to be on the wrong side of those daggers. Properly motivated, I'd seen her carve up entire teams in the blink of an eye. For support, I added Space, Melissa, and Liz. We practiced and drilled, and drilled, and practiced. Space would lead out with the fission of life, a hyper-powered shot of adrenaline. I would go next and set charging formation, magically augmenting the accuracy and precision of our attacks. Finally, Margarita would leap into the fight with her cold steel blade dance. That was usually enough to send any opponents packing. With the team rebuilt and stronger than ever, the boss passed along a word of a job. It was a wanted poster, ripped right off the public square notice board. Little Jack, that demonic little bastard from the Doom Legion had been summoned by some foolish wannabe witch. I don't know why dark practitioners insist on summoning demons. It never worked out well for them. Idiotic witches and warlocks kept me paid though, so there was that. Little Jack wasn't the worst demon out there, but he was bad enough. We gathered our gear and headed over to the patch where the witch had a hovel. I'd hoped to get there before our ritual was complete. It would be easier that way. Unfortunately, no such luck. The witch was gone, her hovel a smoking ruin. I surmised that Jack was loose by the trail of candy he left behind. A kind of calling card, if you will. He liked to play games, and the trail led us to a maze. No doubt filled with friends he'd brought along from the underworld. We slogged through fighting demons, undead, and other miscreants, until we finally cornered him the back of a pumpkin patch. He put a hell of a struggle, but in the end, we sent him packing back to the pits. The boss would be pleased. Maybe he'd even spring from some sharpening oil for Margarita's wraith blades. He was in the mess hall when we got back. That was unusual. Riven rarely came in by person. Slavelle, he said. We need to talk about the arena rankings. I hadn't been looking forward to this conversation. Our team, the Razors, have been stuck in Platinum League for some time. 
Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with Platinum League. It's respectable. Platinum mercenary groups didn't get the cherry jobs, though. And I knew Riven was tired of plucking wanted posters from the public square. He wanted the jobs that elite teams in the Diamond League have access to. You've got one week to get us there, he said simply. You know how the system works, Riven, I replied. Beat a team, move forward. Beat enough teams and you qualify for the stronger league, I said. Riven nodded. We're going to need to win 10 or 12 matches, and we don't have the entry fees for that many this season, I said. He pulled a patch from his belt and tossed it to me. It landed in my open palm with a dull thud. Inside were more gems than I'd ever seen in one place. That's all of it, he said. This will have to be enough. We had a good team, and the first few matches went well enough. The space to Sauvel to Margarita opening combination carved through opponents like a butcher through beef. After a dozen matches, we just needed one more. Win, and we're in the big time. Lose, and we'd be returning shamed and penniless to our patron. The last match was against Hardex's team. I hadn't even realized he was in the competition, much less in the finals. One of us was moving forward. From our conversation in the barracks yard a few days back, I figured one of us wouldn't be going home at all. Hardek was fast, superhuman fast, and a master of the repost. Any mistakes I made, I could count on him exploiting. He'd brought Zia and Holder with him as well. Zia was a solid hero, an experienced gladiator. He'd chosen well. Holder had come with him as well, which surprised me. I thought Holder was out of the game. He was a veteran. He'd been in Diamond League for most of his career. But he had retired about six months ago. I guess it didn't suit him because now he was back. The fight commenced and we got the drop on them. Holder and their speed booster got taken out in our first volley. They had no chance to respond. In the second round, I lined up a shot on Zia. When I pulled the trigger, the recoil on my rifle almost knocked me off my feet. But it did its job and knocked her out of the ring. With the team gone, it was just hard act against us. I could feel the heat of his seething anger from across the ring. Yield? I asked. Hopefully. I'd rather die, was his reply as he leapt for me. Shot after shot rang out, but Hardak was too quick and his armor too strong. He was whittling us down, slowly but surely. I don't know if he got tired or if I just got lucky, but eventually he stumbled. I took advantage of the opening and nailed him with a quick shot. He was down. Arena fights aren't usually to the death, but Hardak had forsworn all good sense and forced mortal combat. As I left the ring, I didn't look to see if he had survived. If he did, I knew that I'd made an enemy for life. I was okay with that. After all, the Razors were now Diamond League and not likely to face him or his team again. Back at the barracks, Riven awaited. He'd brought Brandy to celebrate with the team. He took me aside as we all made merry and handed me our next assignment. It was a private commission. I had to stifle a gasp as I read it. I looked at my empty glass and decided it was past time for a refilling.